Thank you. <laughs> so, hi, Rob. Uh, welcome to Envirolution Festival. Uh, we're happy to have you on board, but maybe before we start, it'd be really nice to know what you've been up to during this uh, lockdown and how you've been finding it. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. It's nice to be hanging out with you today. Um, well, I, uh, I actually embarked on a World Solutions Tour about three months ago. The idea was I was going to be giving talks around the world, to, uh, you know, talk about solutions, inspire people to make positive changes in their life. And I arrived in Europe um, basically days before coronavirus really changed the Cult, things and, yeah. and shook things up. And so, so my tour has been pretty much canceled. And uh, but it's been a, a good opportunity for other things, and uh, so my my goal has just been, you know, I'm a privileged person with time, so how can I use my time to to be of service to others and benefit to others? And it's difficult to do when you're not allowed to see others. You know, becoming this digital, it's, you know, things have been so digital the last few months. So I've been trying to use the digital world to to do to have the work that I can and I'm really excited where we are now at the state where we're actually yeah. able to start seeing people and, uh, again. It's great to be able to broadcast things like this because we can still use the digital media as a way to interact with people. Uh, and would you say that you think that this will generally change how you might do some of your work going forwards? If you have the world tours and things that you might move some of it more online for people in the next few months? I hope that my life doesn't become online. Um, yeah. My intentions is to keep things as in-person as possible. Um, maybe that would mean smaller events, you know, but my goal is always to keep things, uh, you know, as much, I mean, I love doing things online, but when possible, human to human, I think is so important. Uh, there's, you can connect to people online, but it's not the same as a hug and, and uh, yeah. you know, being in person. So. I will, as long as I'm alive, do my best to try to uh, keep things as humanly as possible. Great. And I think especially while the, the crowds are smaller and until events pick back up in size, the idea of doing things in smaller groups is really important to keep things rolling. Yeah. Uh, and I think that having the positive stories around this is uh, really inspiring. So I know you've been visiting a lot of communities during your time um, during this lockdown period. And what would you say maybe you've noticed things in these smaller groups that uh, you value this human interaction still? Well, the nice thing about community is that it's, it's very resilient to the times that we're in. I mean, imagine if you have the people that you want to be around, the land that you love and the food that you need all there, then the lockdown doesn't really affect you that yeah. much. And so the dream to me is to have to be surrounded by the people that you love in a place where you feel purposeful and passionate about life and where you have your basic needs met, food and water and you can you can kind of live in a way where you're working with the earth and that's the idea of a lot of communities, that's the goal of a lot of communities. Um, and yeah, I think that this has been a big wake up call for a lot of people in seeing things aren't as secure as they thought maybe. Yeah, totally. And things can uh, come crumbling down in a nearly a moment. And I think a lot of people will come away from this time with a stronger desire to be living in community. And you think for a lot of the people who maybe haven't had this chance to live in community, they don't know how to access it, you think that it would be quite easy to find places that they can join in and hang out with and find out whatever works for them. You think it's quite an easy introduction to yeah. join communities? Yeah, the two websites that I recommend the most are Woofing, uh, which stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms, and it's www.oof.net. And that's an opportunity where you can come volunteer at places and uh, learn skills, usually organic farming, but so, you know, sustainability, simple living, um, so that's a great website for community. It's not always really community oriented. A lot of times it's small farms, but a lot of the farms have a community element. And then the other website that I really recommend is ic.org for intentionalcommunities.org. And there are thousands around the world or tens of thousands listed on ic.org. And so that's a great way. And then just volunteering, you know, volunteering at, at communities is a great way to become a part of community to be able to be of assistance to the community and then at the same time gain as well. So 
yes, the opportunities to become a part of community and learn about communal living are definitely out there. Great, because I think uh, a lot of the times the people, they might not think that it's something for them, but actually during this time we've heard so many good stories and communities around the world coming together to support, uh, whether it's from food sharing to helping out the key workers around the world. And actually a lot of these stories are the people, uh, these stories are what people seem to really enjoy. Yeah. And uh, this positive nature definitely reinforces the, the value of these things. Well, one of the things is that's the nice thing about trying things out. Um, if you use a website like Woofing or check out, uh, you know, volunteering on a community, you're not committed to anything long term. See how it works. See if you like that. See if you prefer that over living in an apartment on your own. And if it turns out you don't like that, well, first try another place. See if you like that one. You know, it can be hard to get along with humans. Find the humans that you do get along with. Don't give up after, you know, one try. But you can always go back, you know, to your comfort zone. But it's great to get out of your comfort zone um, but know that you know if you have to you can always go back yeah cool so during this time uh, I think it's been a lot of change for a lot of people uh, maybe do you feel like you've possibly changed how you reflect on how you're taking the day to day you know not too much has changed for me because the thing is uh, you know the coronavirus pandemic is a big deal but in the grand scheme of things it's just another blip mm -hmm. in humanity this is a, we go through catastrophes, we go through plagues and viruses and wars, and we tend to get very focused on this particular moment and we say this is historic, but history happens every single day. This is historic, but every generation has multiple huge things and, and they constantly are coming. I mean, if you just go back over the last five years, you could see the number of times when people think the world is ending. Yeah. So I very much uh, focus on the big picture. I always focus on zooming out and not looking at just this place and time of humanity. And so I designed my life around that. I designed my life around um, the big picture. And so for me, it hasn't really changed much because this wasn't unexpected. Sure, I didn't know exactly what virus it would be or how, but this is just part of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so no, it hasn't changed much for me. Um, the, the one thing though is that it did, uh, so I recently did a year of growing and foraging all my food in Florida, as you know, mm -hmm. and so a year with no grocery stores or restaurants, you know, living simply off the land. And my plan was to do that again, um, in a cold climate. Okay to do a different way and show people it can be done there as well. And I guess that would involve different things, more like pickling and yeah. storage of long-term yeah. growth and stuff yep. like that. And um, so this actually kind of motivated me to get back to the land sooner. Mm -hmm. I was on this tour where I'd be kind of disconnected from the land quite a bit, being in cities and such. And so basically the coronavirus pandemic really did motivate me to get back to the land sooner where I have control of my food and where I'm with the people that I love and you know on land that I love like mm -hmm. I said earlier. And you think uh, it's possible maybe like you say that you feel quite comfortable with how you've uh, responded to this, the, the crisis and um, like what's your kind of take on how you've seen other people interacting with each other? Do you see a change in everybody else around you as a, a cause of this do you think? I definitely change don't. Behavior? Yeah, I mean, I don't see a change in everyone by any means. There's no doubt that millions of people have awoken to more of the truth behind our our lives. Mm -hmm. so, you know, today we live these global industrial lives, which basically hide the truth behind almost all of our actions, where our food comes from, our energy, you know, the trash that we create and where it goes after we put it in the garbage can, even where our water comes from and where where our poop goes after we flush yeah. the toilet, like. A lot of people are waking up to a lot of more of the injustices and inequalities in the world. Um, so no doubt in my mind, millions of people will, millions of people are and will change because of coronavirus. But also, there's plenty of people that are going to stay on the path of consumerism. And in fact, a lot of them may consume more after yeah. three months of not being able to. And there's a lot of people who think that the solution to this is simply create a vaccine, like simply high tech uh, monitoring mm -hmm. solutions, um, not what is the problem in the first place. Whereas some people would say, well, 
confined animal systems uh, create most of like you know most of our our major breakouts are because of factory farming. Yeah. And so, so a lot of people aren't even remotely considering true solutions, more short-sighted. Um, so I see people will be go. People will. So many people will maintain their path with barely the blink of an eye, and other people will go in the complete opposites. But some will go for a complete consumerism, and some will go for trying to live a more sustainable, equal, just life. And would you think that some of these opportunities for ways to take steps, if you want to become more sustainable in general, I think a lot of them are quite positive. We see these things on the news. And often uh, there's a lot of stories, it's bad to do this, it's bad to do this. And sure, obviously we can improve the way that we live, but I actually, you know, we believe there are a lot of positive steps to take. Yeah. But if you, if you were thinking about suggesting if somebody said, hey, I want to be more sustainable, what would be like the most easy options for me? I don't have a lot of time, I don't have a lot of resources, I live in a city. Yeah. Why would you suggest to begin? Well, I generally suggest beginning with your food, because food is life. Um, yeah. It's the center of our lives to a large degree. Our social lives, our for much of it, our joy, our family is often centered around food. And food is something that can either cause a huge amount of destruction or regeneration, depending on how we get our food. And so, you know, my thing would be trying to eat more local food, so food from your area. If you live in a big city like Paris or Amsterdam or New York, then trying to find farms that are just outside the city or within a couple hundred kilometers, you know, pretty local food. And then um, supporting sustainable production systems, so organic farmers, small farmers, um, and then as much as possible unpackaged food, so buying foods in bulk where you fill your own container rather than, you know, stuff wrapped in plastic. And, and then another one is less processed food, so rather than frozen pizza, which uh, has a lot of ingredients in it that you just don't know what they are and corporations are really able to put things in there that shouldn't be in our bodies. Um, more whole foods like cooking from scratch, uh, fruits and vegetables, grains, um, nuts, seeds, you know, if, for people finding local meat or local dairy if that's what, the, you know, what they want in their diet. Um, so those would be some of the big ones, starting with, starting with food. Another big one is um, transportation uh, riding a bike is a beautiful way to move around or walk it's good for you exercise wise it helps get you outside more a part of your community rather than stuck in a car angry at other people in traffic so those would be some of my oh and then the other really one is grow a little bit of your own food even if it's just some herbs on your balcony growing a little of your own food can be really deeply meaningful yeah, and it has a beautiful connection when you know that something that you've done yourself in your kitchen top that you put into your own dinner has that real feeling that you created some of it yourself. Yeah. And uh, so from that, I mean, I know that you obviously have so much knowledge of growing from across Florida and in warmer countries, um, but I guess you're also looking at these places in colder climates too. So you think it's pretty easy kind of wherever you are in the world to grow a little bit of something in your kitchen? Yeah, I mean, there are extremes, uh, you know, living uh, in the, um, you know, Alaska, the far, far north, or, of course, Antarctica, and, and uh, then the, some extreme deserts and tundras and such, but almost nobody listening to this lives there. You know, anywhere across almost any of the... the the Americas, North America, Central and South America, most all of Europe, Asia, most of Africa, you know, almost everywhere we can grow some of our own food and, and almost everywhere we can grow an incredible amount of our own food. You just have to work with your local climate and work with your local region. People like to look at uh, things and always think the grass is greener on the other side. But everywhere has its problems. It's about adapting to those problems and figuring out solutions for where you are. Great. And if, um, if you were to suggest like an easy kind of top three, top five for what you can start growing at home or your personal favorites, what would you go yeah. for? Well, I would um, generally start with greens, whether it's, you know, you have like kale, Swiss chard, spinach, arugula. Um, and they are pretty hardy vegetables, I understand. So they will grow in a lot of places. Yeah, well, greens are generally fairly easy to grow. They're fast producing a lot of the times. And then the other thing is that they're one of the most nutrient dense foods. So you get a lot out of it. And also shipping greens really is one of the least efficient things to ship because um, 
they take up a lot of space because they're so fluffy and airy and and light so they don't really make sense to fill truckloads full so sustainability wise and uh, nutrition wise and ease wise greens are a good place to start and then also herbs herbs can be really easy whether it's cilantro or coriander dill oregano basil uh, you know there's there's a few dozen easy herbs to grow and one easy way to start for you know real beginners is go to a nursery buy the herbs you know in little pots already and then you don't have to start from seed it gives you a big head start if you're really new to gardening that can be I mean even a lot of uh, veteran gardeners do that that's a really good way to start easily but if you want to save money start from seed because it's dirt I mean it's seeds are so I mean one handful in this hand right here I can hold enough kale seeds to feed a city of probably a hundred thousand people you know seeds are an incredibly amazing thing fantastic and I think uh, it's like a really easy message to put across to people that wherever you are in the world mostly you can find something and you can grow it and you can start seeing and start testing and it's not about don't be afraid to make mistakes that's yeah. okay these things they might not look perfect like you see in the supermarkets but that's still totally fine yeah it well just in fact you don't want them to look like they do in the supermarkets yeah well, this is also true <laughs> the perfection in the supermarkets generally happens because they throw out all the non-perfect looking ones the the wonky fruits and vegetables and um and the, yeah to be a good gardener you must kill some plants like no no good gardener has gotten good without failing like so failing is actually when it comes to growing your own food is actually required mm -hmm. to be successful at growing your own food so a lot of people are very you know they call themselves they say they have a black thumb mm -hmm. um, but you you got to have a little bit of a black thumb in order to have a green thumb you'll never have a green thumb without um, without having some of that black thumb first. And sometimes some of these basics can include things like uh, not planting too many seeds next to each other and there are good you know YouTube guides for stuff yeah. like this right and you there's, a, there's a lot of basic uh, you know what I would recommend is getting a ideally a, a book from your region so if you're in the UK find a book written by a UK food grower for example and then you really the answers are all there and one thing I want to say about growing food is that um, growing your own food is not even remotely just about growing food it's about stepping away from systems that you don't support like right now in the United States um, there are people on the streets across you know a few dozen cities protesting police brutality and um, you know a totally unjust uh, system mm -hmm. of the prison industrial complex and so some people don't see the connection but the thing is when you are when you're supporting these these co corporations that have monetized our food just as an example if you're buying Driscoll strawberries the people that are p spraying those strawberries with those pesticides they have two to four times higher rates of cancer and respiratory disease for you to have those strawberries on your table and so when we when we support this global industrial food system we support the corporations that are really taking advantage of uh, advantage of a lot of people in in uh, underprivileged situations so growing your own food is, is is just a one act of resistance and a way to take your money out of these these systems that do prey upon uh, people and to instead keep that money local and support people uh, in a local system so um, it's you know that's the thing about living sustainably one of the things is that most you know most of the things that we do that are unsustainable the people they harm the most are the people that don't deserve to be harmed mm -hmm. at all there's you know a term called environmental racism if you want to look that up and that's about that's about really seeing how our environmental destruction really harms most more the, the communities of people of color and so um, yeah I just wanted to, to mention that that growing food is is it, it can be about self-sufficiency, but for many people, it's also an act of resistance against a corrupt system and government. And uh, I think one of the really good sides that you touched on is also that there are totally 
so many positive solutions to take in order to face of some of these difficulties that we share around the world. That actually, the fact that you can just go and buy local and know that this thing that you purchase just to eat that you would do every day that maybe you don't think about so much, that simple act of what strawberries brand you buy or totally not a brand in many cases. Yeah. It can totally lift uh, your mood and how you feel about saying that you're interacting with and all of a sudden you know that you're making a difference just by that simple interaction. Yeah. And by that multiplies and when so many people around the world take that on, then we start to see a, you know, quite a wide change. Yeah. Yeah, it's about looking at all of your actions and seeing who's being supported and who's being hurt by your actions and then trying to unravel them so that your actions actually uplift people rather than bring them down and it's every one of our actions and it's, it's about where we put our money you know for example I've chosen not to pay federal taxes in the United States because if I was paying federal taxes right now who would I be paying for I'd be paying for the the Army National Guard or whatever term it is that they're putting out to to shoot rubber bullets at protesters I would be paying for that if I was paying federal taxes so it's it's very important to see where, or, or the prison industrial contact uh, uh, complex is paid for by, by taxes. So it's very important to see where you're putting your money and what you're supporting. And, and I choose instead to put as money, much of my money as possible into local organizations that are really working on equality and justice um, rather than putting it into the system that is doling out injustice and inequality. Totally. And I, uh, it's really positive. It's really, you know, finding the positives when there are like so many strange times going on right now can really help to shift the balance, especially in the mental state for a lot of people who, you know, they're in this lockdown. They don't know quite when it's going to end, when life goes back to normal. Yeah. But knowing that there are still so many good things that we can do right now, we don't have yeah. to wait to wait for this grand plan that, you know, we can find a way to fix. Actually, there are plenty of things that we can do like right day you know yeah and there's a lot of things that we can do to focus on the positive um, you know it is a it is a daunting time to be alive and and uh, certainly you know protesting and signing petitions is something that we can do but it often doesn't really revitalize us it doesn't really give us energy so while those things are important we can also find outlets where um, we make positive changes that actually create a positive feedback cycle that makes us make more and more positive changes and actually increases our quality of life while increasing other people's quality of life. So it's really important to find outlets um, that are positive and will help you continue forward in times where it would be easy to you know, feel nothing but, but hope, but, but, but despair. Yeah, and I um, seeing all of these positive stories and talking about this positive. Obviously, Envirolution and everything that goes around this festival idea is that simple fact that positive reinforcement, it keeps on going, it goes wider. You tell your friends, I tell my friends, and it keeps on going. And it's actually very difficult to stop once it starts picking up. That You've seen so many of these positive stories that very soon people are really excited about these ideas that are carried across. And, you know, for, I mean, I guess the question in this is that you've been working on this for a lot of years. You've seen a lot of things. But how do you feel, you still feel this growth over the last few years? I think, I mean, from my personal perspective, it's getting so much easier to find a lot of these positive choices. Yeah. It's not just a starting from scratch that you have to try really hard to find a local place or yeah. a good community. And then they're springing up in a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely an incredible amount going on. Um, just so many millions of people are waking up and wanting to change and many 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 people are and there's so many solutions out there to be a part of and uh, it's definitely you know you also have to watch out because a lot of there's a lot of greenwashing out there there's a lot of companies that act like they're a part of the solution when they really are the problem if you have a bottled water that says 30% less plastic in the in the design of the bottle they market that as there's a sustainability or environmentally friendly. It's not at all. Bottled water in itself is not sustainable or environmentally friendly. So you also have to watch out. There's a lot of false advertising, a lot of greenwashing. Um, so you have to be smart about it and you have to do your due diligence. But um, it is a time when, yeah, it is the, the options are a lot easier to find totally. for, than, for a lot of people than they used to be. I think it's also important what you've touched on with the bottle of water with the corporate side of things that not all corporations are bad but certainly there's a, there's a reputation for a reason for a lot of these things. It doesn't come out of nowhere. 
but also that balance between being cynical and positive that we can trust ourselves and our friends and our families and people around us so much more than maybe we sometimes do and uh, perhaps that cynical aspect is definitely it has a focus where it's most useful and definitely like the part where we trust ourselves to be better and to help ourselves and to help our friends it has that real strong balance against where we need to be cynical with corporations yeah. I think that's where we can really help to build a lot of the movements going forwards that we want to see yeah. and uh, I certainly know from what you've seen in the past obviously it's going to be possibly more than a lot of people here but that's why it's great to have uh, your voice and talking about this yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely always encourage critical thinking I definitely don't consider myself cynical at all but I'm always asking questions and, and I would say never stop asking questions and Especially the bigger something is, the more questions you have to ask because mm -hmm. there's more working parts, there's more people involved, there's more opportunity for, for corruption. Um, so yeah, again, I don't, I'm not cynical at all, but asking questions and being critical is, I think, a very important part of trying to live a sustainable and just life. Totally. And I think the critical thinking can really help when we share our thoughts with each other. Uh, so if you have these feelings in your in your mind to yourself, it's always good to talk with other people and share these conversations because this is how we we grow as a you know a society with a really good base and understanding of the food system, of everything that we've talked about today. A lot of it can be taken further by having these conversations and not being afraid to talk about them. Yeah, absolutely. So I would totally like to finish uh, on asking you, you know, how you want a world, how you would envisage the world looking post lockdown. Now, we've talked a lot in the Envirolution Festival in general about the concept of my future planet. Uh, and how, how would you see your future planet looking in the next few months, in the next few years? Well, my honest answer is I don't see things changing an incredible amount. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, that, I mean, my honest answer is I think that humans are largely on a path of destruction and we're going to continue that path of destruction. Um, and, but... So the answer would be, so why do I try? You know, why, yeah, totally. why, if I think that is the case, then why do I try? And the reason why is that whatever happens to the world, whether it's in my lifetime or a few lifetimes from now or 500 years from now, no matter what happens, life matters. I believe that all of our lives matter. Your life, my life, everybody here at this community, everybody watching this, every other species on earth. And so if we can live in a way where we're improving quality of life, rather than taking from other quality of life. And that's important and that's, and, and that's meaningful no matter what happens because life matters. Mm -hmm. And I also know that I don't control the world. I don't want to control the world. I don't think anyone should control the world. None of us have the problems of the world on our backs. Just because we were born into a difficult time doesn't mean we are responsible for fixing the problem. Um, of humanity, all the problems of humanity. But with that being said, there's things we can do. You know, we can't solve world hunger, but we can grow a garden and feed the elderly people in our community who are neglected and don't have access to healthy food. Or we can't clean up all the trash in the ocean, but we can work together with our community to have a nice lake for ourselves and for the other species. And so that's meaningful and that matters, and it's taking control of what we can, taking responsibility for our own actions, and, um, and that's why, for me, it doesn't, it, whatever happens, it doesn't affect whether or not I'm going to try to live a good life and help others to live a good life. And I think that's a really good thing to take away from it. That, uh, there are so many things that feel like we can't do, but there's so many things that we can do. Yeah. There are so many things that we can all do, and it's not about, you know, we're talking about no one in to control the world ourselves yeah totally but when we can come together to make things a little better actually when everyone makes things a little better you really do see it lift and i think in the last few years the awareness is really growing which is really hardening i think some things online are really helping but obviously that human touch that human connection we cannot lose sight of that and how important that is to help further some of these conversations but I think totally the balance between some of this online is going to be interesting in the next few months and it's really important that people don't let go of what we have right now and we keep on pushing. Yeah, definitely, definitely have some human connection when you can. Like yeah. Give us some good hugs. <laughs> it's good to be here with you. It's good. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. So, yeah, enjoy the rest of the festival. Nice to see you all. Love you all very much. Hopefully. Okay. Oh no, they'll just cut it.
Yeah, I know. Well, I will. Hopefully it's still... Yep. Still rolling. Yep. It's on. Cool. I mean...